Well, hello once again everyone. It's your boy Jingles Roscoe with another speed drawing. And today, I decided to draw my Pathfinder character, Garath the Barbarian. Here we go. So, let me tell you all a little bit about Garath. Uh, Garath was a character that I had initially created for a Pathfinder one-shot that a friend of mine had started. Um, he created this uh, homebrewed race of bears. And the, the bears that I was playing uh, was going to be a barbarian. We had another bear that was also a paladin. Uh, but we, we had the one shot and it was, it was okay. Uh, it was a little fun. Uh, I didn't really have much of a character for Gareth or anything like that at that point. So when uh, my brother Smiter decided that he wanted to start doing uh, a campaign as well. Well, first a one shot. I decided to reuse Gareth and reuse what I already had for him. And uh, I just made like a little, little thing. He was just like a bear, it's whatever. And he was a barbarian class. So there was a little bit of racial stuff that we homebrewed up in order to, you know, balance him out just fine. But for the class, we just pretty much stayed with regular old barbarian class, right? And so we, we had our one shot, it was a lot of fun. Uh, and we decided that we'd like to actually do like a full campaign, which we've been kind of hitting here and there, doing here and there a little bit. Smiter still being the DM for that one. Uh, and so when we decided to start doing that, we decided to create actual full character backstories. And so I sat down and created a, a long thing for Garath. And so I'm going to go ahead and read you here what I have written down as his, uh, his backstory. <clears throat> in the Blackwood Forest, there is a village, a village of man with a handful of dwarves and woodland elves. The village, called Staghold, does business with other larger villages around the area, but the residents also do business with another secret village. Only the people of Staghold know about the secret village and help keep it hidden from the outside world. A village of intelligent, talking bears. The Bear Village has no name, but it is often called the Bear Village. The bears often supply Staghold with furs, meats, berries, and honey. Staghold then supplies the bears with anything that they need, mainly medical help, supplies, and weapons. The bears have no need for money, as everyone shares what is needed. The older bears, too old to hunt or gather, are often held in high respect and regard. These elders are often decision makers and advice givers, though the village as a whole has final say on any choices that affect the village. One of the most respected bears is named Gathrak, who fought in a great war where he may or may not have killed, quote, Fitty Man. Gathrak's son, Gerhern, is a well-respected member of the bear community who towers above many of his own kin, and is often sent to do trade with Staghold. If the village had a chief or leader, Gahern would be at the top of the list of potential candidates. Gahern had a number of children with his life mate Balea, the youngest and smallest of which is named Garath. Garath is considered by many as the most gentle bear of the village, as he was never first to strike in a dispute and only killed when it was necessary. After reading storybooks brought from Staghold by his father, Garath became interested in what the outside world was like. Once he was old enough, Garath was given the blessing of the village to go out and learn what he could about the world and find his way in life. After leaving his village and spending a few days in Staghold, Garath headed out in a random direction to see what he could find. After a few weeks, he came across a traveling caravan of people, which captured him and carted him around in hopes of selling this, quote, rare talking bear. Garath refused to talk and only behaved as a normal bear. After a week or two, Garath was eventually purchased by a half-elf noble named Tiberius Nis King, whose psionic powers were able to sense Garath's intelligence. And that was kind of the backstory that we had established for Garath. And his friend, who is a player character, Tavariusness King, is a psychic half-elf. 
and uh, he's played by my roommate, Josh. And uh, we kind of established that as our backstory. He has his own backstory. Everybody has their own backstory, which I think Smiter is planning on eventually, like, all incorporating together or kind of making it so that everybody has their own individual moments. As for the character of Garath himself, he is a very gentle bear. Uh, I decided to give him kind of a southern drawl, a southern accent. Uh, he's very, very kind, very polite. Uh, he's a very good bear. As for the picture itself, I've never really been one to draw anthropomorphic characters. So this was a bit of a challenge. First, in that I've never really drawn a bear, either anthropomorphic or otherwise. I also had to now come up with this character, like physically. I had a pretty good idea of what I wanted. And luckily, since we've been playing for a little bit, we were able to establish what kind of outfit he was wearing. Garath currently is wearing a breastplate uh, that's been slightly modified so that it actually fits him correctly by having a little bit of chainmail at the bottom so that he, you know, it protects his entire torso rather than just a small part of it. He also recently acquired an Earthbreaker hammer, which does quite a bit of damage, especially considering when he uses it as a two-handed weapon. Garath's biggest stats are strength and constitution as should a barbarian be uh, but being a bear also gave him extra stats in constitution as well and that was part of the homebrewed stuff that we made for him when I was first coming up with the idea of Garath I wanted to definitely create a character Different from how a lot of other people tend to create characters, especially for like D&D or Pathfinder. I know a lot of people, it's their first time playing. They want to they wanna be like an elven wizard or something like that. Some kind of spellcaster. Uh, and I knew I wanted to give the option and leave it open for many of the other uh, people that are part of our group that haven't really played much before. I wanted to give them the opportunity to be able to play those characters and stuff. So I decided to fill in the role of the Barbarian and as a, a tanky melee character. We have a, a few other characters that are also filling up different roles in the group as well. As mentioned before, there's Tavariusness King, who is a psychic class, half-elf. Along with him, we have the elven brawler named Peppermint. And I haven't drawn any pictures for uh, the rest of them yet, but we also now have a tiefling cleric that uh, goes by the name of Cicadus Alabaster, as well as a Samsaron magus that wields a powerful sword named Zeph, and a Vishkanya that is being played by my little sister, who is named Aklis. It's really been interesting when creating a character like Arath because I haven't really... I've, I've made plenty of OCs before in my time, but Garath is, is very similar to me, but also quite different for me as well. He's very, very mellow, very nice, but he's also a very powerful rager. switched over from the one-shot to the full-fledged campaign, 
um, I decided to change Garat's archetype. Initially, I was going to go with a superstitious barbarian type, uh, which is a type that's, you know, good against spellcasters and stuff like that. They can be frustrating to have to deal with if you're an enemy spellcaster. I decided that instead I would go for the in invulnerable rager archetype, as it seemed more appropriate for his large bear stature. Garath himself is also just... After I had established what his character was, um, he's just been kind of fleshing himself out as we go. Just, I understand what I want from him and how I believe he would act in certain situations. And as different situations show up, I am reminded that, you know, my character would act this way and not so much what I, as the player, already know would act in a different way. It's one of the, the fun things about role-playing is that you're taking on this character and if the character you know would act in a certain way that would be contrary to how you yourself would actually act, it really adds a very interesting level of depth and complexity to the character themselves. It seems that over time, Garath himself has just also been, oddly enough, one of the bigger like problem solvers in the group. Uh, a lot of the other characters are quick to maybe try and fight or like get into an argument or ruin the relationship with and the NPC that we're trying to get info from or work with. Garath's gentle and nice nature has... <laughs> in a weird way been the the way that we've been able to avoid really messy conflicts that's not to say that Garath doesn't like a good fight he, he enjoys fighting powerful enemies there's a lot of good that can come out of planning ahead first and not attacking the first thing that you see which i think is kind of funny considering he is a bear I think over time, Garath himself has just been kind of, kind of been considering the group favorite. Uh, a lot of my other friends and PCs that join in our little adventures have said how much they just enjoy Garath as a character, and I'm and I'm glad because I don't really feel like I make like super hard decisions when it comes to Garath. I just think about well, this is what Garath would do, and so I just do it. Here we're moving on to the coloring phase, and uh, it's something that I, I thought was going to take a little while, and actually it probably was the longest part of the whole thing. Just drawing the design of the character was relatively easy, as I had whipped up some rough sketches and ideas of what I wanted in the first place, uh, and never drawing a bear before, having to look up reference and stuff like that of what they kind of look like and how they stand and stuff like that. The colors were something that I was not 100% sure of what I wanted or what I expected. So it was very interesting to kind of mess around with them, kind of move the sliders around and find the colors that I really wanted on this character. Some characters are a lot easier to know pretty much what it is that you want them to look like. Other characters you just kind of have to mess around and experiment with until you know for sure what it is that you want out of them. Now that I've pretty much established what the colors are going to be, I go ahead and start coloring the line work. 
it's a little something that I've picked up over the years, and I, I enjoy the the way that it looks. Um, back before, in some of my older drawings, I would color all of the lines, uh, except for the very outermost ones. Lately, I've been more selective as to which lines it is that I actually color, and uh, I think it kind of looks a little bit better now than the way that I had been doing it before. What do you guys think? Now with the line work all nice and colored, we move right on to the shading. I usually do the shading first before I start coloring the lines, but I don't know why, I just decided to do it in this other way this time. I guess I also like to mention that uh, Garath being the biggest and strongest of the group, he actually carries a lot of the group's stuff, mainly just his own stuff, which isn't a whole lot because he doesn't need a whole lot, but he also carries stuff for his best friend, Tavariusness King, uh, who I mentioned before was the one who rescued him from the circus troupe and paid for his release. Tavariusness being a kind of a spellcaster, but a psychic, doesn't have a very large strength stat, so Garath is more than happy to carry and lug around everything that he needs. If you guys yourself ever have the opportunity to find a group to play Pathfinder or D&D with, I would suggest doing it because I feel like it's one of the best ways to get your creative juices flowing and come up with ideas for characters and have a good idea of what it is that you want out of a character. And here it is. We're all done. Uh, this is the final image of Garath. And thank you all for watching and uh, sitting and listening to me talk about this Pathfinder character that I've developed over the course of a couple years. Yeah, feel free to go ahead and leave comments on what you think about these characters and uh, tell me if you also play Pathfinder or D&D and the kind of characters that you guys come up with. That's stuff that I always like to hear about. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you guys have a good one. <laughs>